Hey everyone, my name is Rick Gualtieri and this is Tales of a Midlist Author. Um, I am back. I know I promised you guys uh, I wouldn't ditch you after the last one uh, for a year, so I'm trying to make good on that. Um, and uh, hopefully this one has uh, has a bit of bit of good meat for it. The last one was a bit of an advanced class. Let's talking about talking about going full time. This one is uh, is one something that anybody at any step in their career can do, and also something I think is going to be pretty useful to most people. And that is Amazon Marketing Service or AMS ads. And uh, these are the ads you have access to run on Amazon directly if you are part of their KDP Select program. Um, I've, I've seen some various things. There's been a few glitches and a few, I think, a few tests where Amazon might be uh, testing it out beyond KDP Select. But for the most part, it's for KDP Select um, slash Kindle Unlimited authors to use. <coughs> Excuse me. So I um, want to touch upon, upon that. Um, before we get started, you know, we have about 10 or 15 minutes to talk about that. You know, I'll try to give you some info on it, but uh, we probably won't get into huge depth. You know, feel free to ask me questions in the comments. That said, there are other authors offering paid classes on AMS. Um, I haven't taken any. I've been doing them myself for uh, several months now. Um, you know, just kind of like trial and error learning them. I know, am, am I a master at them? No. Am I running profitably? Yes. So take that as you, what you will. But uh, before paying for any class, um, and I've said this before with regards to how-to books, make sure if somebody is claiming to be a master at something, they actually are. Um, look them up on Amazon. Uh, make sure that their books are like ranked better than yours. Um, if they're not, that's a problem. Uh, you know, make sure that they're actually, if they're claiming to be a bestseller, make sure they are a bestseller before giving them any money. Because if they're not, chances are they don't know shit. So take that as you will. So Amazon product ads. And uh, before we continue, I just want to apologize. You can see all the crap in the background. It's not Christmas yet, and I still haven't, like, you know, wrapped everything. And you know, we're still using my my room for storage. So next, next tale from Midless author. I expect to have this cleaned out a little bit, um, except for controller thirteen, you know, over my shoulder there, hanging up. He's like kind of my uh, my good luck charm slash, uh, you know, you know, mind control overlord. Anyway, if you have access to uh, to KD KDP. Um, or I'm sorry, if you're in KDP Select, you have books enrolled, you have access to advertise on Amazon via paid ads. Um, you, know, you get to this from the KDP dashboard. Um, I believe under reports, there's a, there's, a, there's a link there to take you to, uh, to the ad page. You log in, you know, same, same login as everything, and it'll give you the option of creating one of two types of ads, a sponsored ad or a product display ad. Uh, we'll talk about product display ads first, um, because honestly, I think they're significantly less useful than sponsored ads but a product display ad is basically an ad that's going to show up on one of Amazon's either searches or their product pages and typically or or on their Kindle devices um, and it shows up essentially as you know a picture of your book a little headline you give it and a, and a small little blurb depending on where people see it um, you have two choices when you create a product display ad. You can target target categories, like I could say, hey, you know, you know target fantasy, um, or you can t target products. I've targeted the, the, the categories before, and honestly, the, the information they give you, the information data that Amazon gives you back, they're very sting, stingy with data. So if you're targeting multiple categories, they're really not going to tell you what categories or what pages are actually delivering for you. So as a result, it makes it really hard to optimize their ads. Um, if you target via products, I've had better success with that. Um, I have ran, run a few that have like you know managed to stay moderately successful. They're not usually, they're not high ROI ads, but uh, I have run a few. And in that case, you have at least a little more control because you're saying here are the other books that I think match mine, or the other authors that I think match mine, and at least you know I'm targeting against them. I know I'm targeting against them. And that gives you a little more granularity with regards to control and knowing what's working and what's not. That being said, as I said, the product display ads, I found them to be so-so at best. I think they work best in conjunction with the sponsored ads as kind of a secondary, you know, kind of a reinforcement. Um, when I was running product display ads by themselves, they kind of sucked. Um, now that I'm more focused on sp sponsored ads, if I run a product display ad as kind of a secondary, kind of just to like, you know, reinforcement, I find they do much better. Um, that said, I usually keep the spend on those pretty low. 
Um, you know, I can, you, you do have the option of playing around with the date that they start, they stop, um, how much your total, the maximum budget you set for them, and you can play around with the bid. So, I mean, if something is like you're costing a lot of money, lower the bid, see if that does better. Um, you know, do what you do, 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 do what you must, must there. But as I said, I don't really find the product display ads um, too useful. I want to spend most of the time talking about sponsored ads because uh, those I know have uh, have been really good for me. Um, they've been out for a while now, and it is starting to get a little bit uh, a little bit crowded in the space. But uh, there's still a lot of opportunity there. But I will say this about sponsored ads: they are not set it and forget it. Um, you have to babysit them. You have to look at them very often. You have to modify them. You have to tweak them um, if you want them to stay profitable. If uh, you're just looking for something that you say, okay, here's my ad, here's my budget, and let me go away and come back in a month, um, you're probably going to wind up just watching that money get flushed down the toilet. So if you're just looking for an ad to put out there and not have to worry about it, just turn off this video now because this is not going to help you. Okay, so sponsored ads. You have two options there. Uh, we'll start on the easier one, automated. In an automated sponsored ad, you're basically telling Amazon, here's the book I want to... I want to choose to advertise, and I would recommend these work best as first for first in a series. Um, I have done a few ads for standalones, and you know I've I've made some pretty decent gains. You know, seen seen some nice increases in in rank, but they work best for first in a series because with sell through, your threshold for making an ad profitable is a bit lower. Like I know that uh, you know to. to I have nine books out in my series right now. I know that, that if you start book one, there's about a 50% chance, maybe a little bit higher, maybe 55, 60, um, of you making it to book seven. So that, te so that tells me that, uh, that for every dollar I make, or for every book I sell, or say, well, okay, I'm sounding like an idiot, for every two books I sell, one of those readers will go on to finish the series, which you know helps me like, you know, calculate, uh, calculate my ROI a bit. Indirect ROI, but uh, you know, implied. Uh, you know, the math then does tend to hold up. But anyway, the automated ads are: you pick a book, you set your bid, you tell Amazon how long you want to run it for, and Amazon then chooses the placement for the sponsored ad. And go to any book, and you'll probably see, see what I'm talking about. Underneath the underneath the book listing, you'll have your also bought, and underneath that, it will list sponsored products, and they kind of look almost like the also bought. So. Uh, that's why they work pretty well because they kind of look much like Google search results, paid ads kind of look like Google search listings. Amazon sponsored ads look like they're also bought sections. So people don't really necessarily perceive them as ads so much as, okay, here's another book that might be interesting. So with an auto automated placement, Amazon's going to do the work for you. Um, they're going to find the places that they think your book matches up with and they're going to advertise it. They're not going to tell you where that is. Um, and the truth of the matter is you're not going to have any clue what's happening there because they're going to give you very little data back. You're either you're going to know that, yes, people are clicking, no, people aren't clicking, and eventually, are people buying or not? Now, the downside of that is you're not getting a lot of data back. The upside, though, is that I found that Amazon actually continues to optimize those. I have a relatively high bid ad out there. Um, it's been running for several weeks now, and... The av the average co cost or the profit the the profitability on it has been gradually going up. It started off as unprofitable. Um, this is a this is a, a, a column that Amazon calls uh, the ACOS, and what what does that stand for? Average cost of sales. Um, it's really just a percentage to tell you if uh, well if if you're in the in the hole or not. But uh, and typically you want that below seventy percent. Um, because you get 70% of a sale. So an, an ACOS below 70% is good. Anything above it is bad. Anything well above 100 is very bad. Um, and I noticed that the sponsored, these automated sponsored ads, they'll start off pretty poorly, but eventually that ACOS will go down as Amazon continues to optimize it because it's a learning engine. So if you're going to play with, with an automated sponsored ad, let it run for a while. Don't get nervous. You know, if, you're, if after a month you see it's still in the hole, yeah, definitely kill it. But uh, give it a bit and see how it goes, because those are not an overnight success. The other option are manual. Manual is where you're choosing the keywords that people are searching for. And 
how would you choose that? Well, the keywords are looking at things that people are searching through Amazon for. Amazon is one huge search engine, not unlike Google. So I go in there and I put in Stephen King. Um, think of how you search there. When you want to find a new book, do you type in urban fantasy or do you type in, you know, Jim Butcher? Do you type in Dresden Files? That's the logic you want to conquer with keywords. Each ad can have up to a thousand keywords, and the bid there can be anything from from one cent a click all the way up to a thousand dollars a click. I know I've tested this. <laughs> Typically, and Amazon starts you off. Their default is twenty-five cents right now. It used to be fifty cents. It's twenty-five cents. And don't worry. Um, this doesn't mean that every person who's going to click is you're going to be charged your maximum for. Typically, you're going to be paying much less than that. Um, some high some high end authors you are going to be paying more than that. But the bid amount is what is your maximum that you wish to pay for a click? And this puts you in kind of like a competition with the other authors out there who are advertising. So say you decide, okay, I'm going to bid 20 cents a click, and I say I'm going to bid 25 cents a click. I'm outbidding you. So that means that I'm going to show up higher in those rankings and on those sponsored search results. Um, and then when somebody clicks it, am I necessarily going to pay 25 cents? No. Amazon has kind of a secret sauce um, that they're coming out that they have that determines what a click is worth. That's what I'm going to be paying. Um, but it's not going to be above my maximum bid. So if I said I, I only want to pay 25 cents, then it's never going to charge me more than 25 cents a click. And so on and so on. I mean, I'm just talking about two people, but we're talking thousands upon thousands of people all trying to find that secret sauce of how do I get my products to show up on these sponsored bids. Um, <clears throat> so my advice there when choosing bids is test it around. You can modify your bid amount um, as you see fit. Test. One thing you never want to do is you never want to put a bid out there for Amazon's suggested bid. You, won't, you know why? Because everybody else is doing that. Everybody else is, cl is clicking, going, oh, 25 cents, sure, why not? You know, because they don't want to put in the work. You don't want to do that. You either want to go lower, and sometimes lower is good because you can have a low, a low bid keyword that just is out there. It's not doing a lot of sales, but it is profitable. And as long as it's profitable, that's what you want to look for. <clears throat> or you can go high bid. Um, and high bid, typically, I find is anything really over, like, you know, you can have some pretty good success with thirty, with like you know, thirty cents, thirty-five cents, um, because that's higher than what the average person is bidding. Um, I'd say high bids though are going to be above fifty, fifty cents. So sixty cents to a dollar, maybe two dollars, what have you, depending on how popular that author is. You want to play around with that. Um, as for choosing your keywords, remember you can have up to a thousand in an ad. Think about how people search. Use, Am use Amazon to you like your advantage. Go through it, play around with it, see what comes up. Um, look at book names, look at authors, look at genres, look at categories, um, things that you think fit your book, and test those out. And this is why I meant it's not set and forget it. You want to come back in every day and see how those keywords are doing. Now, here's the trick is it's not a one-to-one -one correlation. I don't know how real-time it is, but it's much more real-time than their sales, but Amazon will give you click and cost data pretty quickly. There's usually about a three-day lag before you see sales data. And some people get like, you know, can get, it, it, it can get really nerve-wracking to be like, oh my God, I've, I've spent like $10, $20, $50 on this ad and I don't have any sales. What the hell is happening? Let me kill it. And then you kill it and come back two days later and suddenly there's sales data there that shows the ad actually is profitable. It's a little maddening. Um, I would say you're not going to have an idea how profitable an ad is or a keyword is for probably a good week. Um, so make sure you have the budget for, for that if you are going to test it. Um, you know, don't put a huge, don't put a, hey, my, my, my max, I'm going to set a daily budget for $100 and my max bids for all of these are a dollar and let's go out. And suddenly you find, you're, three days later, you're like, I've spent $300 and, and I have no sales. You know that that was that that was this this month's rent money. Don't be dumb like that. <laughs> Look at what you can afford. Test it out with that. Be prepared to lose that money because marketing is a lot about testing. Um, but then see how it goes. Like I said, you're probably going to need about a week 
One, for an ad to start showing if it's profitable or not. And two, for each new keyword you add, because you can add and remove, you can add or pause keywords as, you, as need be um, with this. So, and I mean, the good thing about, about the sponsored ads is you, Amazon still doesn't give you a ton of data, but they do give you a decent amount of data. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to see the keywords there, your bid, play around with them, and you get the same data for keywords as you do on like, you know, on the main page. So you're going to see, okay, you know, how much am I spending for this keyword? How much, how much is it costing me? How many clicks are there? Um, what is the ACOS? That's your number you're looking for. Is it below 70%? Is it higher than 70%? Um, keep in mind, if this is first of a series, maybe I'm targeting an ACOS that's higher than like, you know, than 70%, which is fine. And that's still profitable. Um, one thing to keep in mind, Amazon ads are not just for eBooks. This tends to freak people out because they're like, I have one, I have one click, one sale, and it's sixteen ninety nine. Or that makes no sense. They work for for paperbacks as well. So um, the downside is, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I don't know, but you, my eBooks are more profitable than my paperbacks. So sometimes, if, if I start seeing that, it's like, oh, okay, I sold that, but I'm only making like, you know, maybe a dollar off each paperback. The upside though is, I am selling a shitload more paperbacks than I ever did. Uh, you know, moving from like, you know, 30 or 40 paperbacks a month to like, you know, to a couple hundred a month, um, that's pretty darn big. Um, and I mean, because the cool thing about paperbacks is that's sitting on somebody's bookshelf somewhere as opposed to like an ebook where it's like, hey, I'm done, delete. <laughs> so keep that in mind. All right. Now, there are definitely some downsides to, to Amazon. Amazon ads. Um, as I mentioned before, the delays in sales reporting, that can drive some people mad. If you are not a patient person, you are not going to like Amazon ads because you're going to be sitting there going, please let those sales show up. Please let those sales show up. Oh my God, is there like, you know, is, the, is there is there something wrong? Is it not working? Uh, let me let me turn it off. And then like three days later, well, you know, it might be the right, the right choice to turn that off. Or three days later, it might be like, God damn it. It's been off all this time and it's been making sales. <laughs> so then you race to turn it back on. I personally recommend looking at these ads at least once a day, you know, even if it's just a five minutes or so, you know, just doing a little house keeping. So that's one issue. Another issue is it's a new service from Amazon and it's still a bit buggy. Um, sometimes my ads will just like, it will be doing awesome for like a month straight. And then suddenly out of nowhere, th there's three days go by and I don't make a dime. Um, and there's just a glitch in the system. Um, it's it's an evolving system and it can be a little bit buggy. So uh, you know there are going to be peaks and valleys no matter how good your ads are. I asked Amazon this question and I really did not like the answer I got. I do expect them to fix it though. Um, but the last I checked with them, there was no real protection against click fraud. So if there's somebody out there who just hates your guts and they see your ad, there's really nothing to stop them from just click 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 clicking it and just costing you money on it. Um, I'm pretty sure Amazon systems are like, you know, compensating for this. Um, you know, I know there's a few people out there who can't stand me and I really haven't seen, uh, seen that happening too much. Um, but, uh, apparently they, they, apparently this is still a, a new system. So, uh, if click fraud is an issue, um, I think that is still something that is working on that said, you know, I do expect that either Amazon has already fixed this or it is something they are working on. Um, it's just something, it's just an answer I got back from uh, customer service uh, not too long ago. <clears throat> I mentioned Amazon is stingy on data. Say you're searching for, say your your one of your keywords is Stephen King. Well, that's great and all. You still don't know where those people are coming from. Like, what book of Stephen King? How are they searching? What page? There's still a, an infuriating lack of data, which sometimes can make optimizing these ads a little crazy. Um, you know, if you're watching this, Amazon, give us more data. More data is a good thing. And as I, I also said earlier. The AMS ads have been out there for a while, um, and Amazon started doing something a while back. I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were starting to give people a free hundred dollars, um, you know, your first in, in ad money to play around with to get more people to use it. Because I think uh, when the sponsored ads first came out, there was a lot of back and forth in like the forums, and people were basically saying, "Oh, stay away from this. You're not going to make money. You're not going to make money." And I don't think a lot of people were trying it, so Amazon started sweetening the pot. Now there's a lot more people out there. Uh, a lot more people are figuring it out. It's becoming a more mature technology. So there is a lot of competition out there. So just keep that in mind is you're not the only one out there advertising and uh, you know, 
I could, we could be bidding, bidding for the same term. If I go to a product page and I see you're higher than me, I'll raise my bid and like knock you out of that top spot. You know, and if you don't notice for a week, it's like, hey, I'm king again. And this is why I say you have to, uh, you have to manage that. So those are kind of my thoughts on the Amazon sponsored ads. Um, Amazon ads in, in general, I am a big fan of them because, you know, Facebook, Google, anywhere else you're advertising, you are, you can target fans of certain books, but you never know if somebody's out there and they're receptive to buying. You know, if I'm on there just searching, surfing Facebook, you know, just to see like, you know, what are the stupid posts my friends have like, you know, put up today. I probably don't care about your book ad. In fact, if anything, it just comes up, it's like, okay, delete. I don't want to see it. If I'm on Amazon searching through books, chances are I'm buying books. And if you're putting yourself in front of me there and it's something I'm interested in, I probably will be most more likely to convert. That's at least my, my logic on it. That's why I like Amazon ads. Um, you're right there in the shopping space um, working on it. <clears throat> Main things are testing, testing, testing. Once again, you cannot set and forget these ads. That is a good way to lose money. Um, I do like working sponsored ads with product display as kind of a backup, kind of a low cost backup, if you will. Um, if you, you can make, you can be profitable on standalone books, although you will do much better on series. Um, you know, just something to keep in mind. Although you can't track all those series. That's the only downside is, you know, if I put out Bill the Vampire um, as a sponsored ad, that's great. I can track all the sales there. I can only guess how many people go on to the next book, to Scary Dead Things, to the Morning Woods, all of that stuff. Um, you know, and that's just kind of data extrapolation. I don't typically recommend them, at least for high volume, for, for subsequent books in the series. I mean, you can do that. Um, I tend to, if I launch a book, I will put an ad, a low cost ad, just to like let people know that, hey, this new book is out there to get it in front of eyeballs, but it's not going to be my driving force. Um, I find that getting people into the funnel, that first book in a series, is the best way to win. So, as I said, I could talk about this stuff for hours, but uh, this is a short YouTube video. Um, I don't want to, like, you know, uh, take up too much time. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, I will say this. Um, I have spent, Jesus, um, thousands of dollars on Amazon ads. Um, at least, let me take a quick look. And probably closing on ten thousand dollars on Amazon ads, and uh, you know I'm happy to say that uh, that it has been a profitable adventure on me. Some are more, some of my campaigns are more profitable than others, um, but I am continually testing. I'm testing, con testing at high bids. I'm testing at low bids. My goal is to find the sweet spot for every keyword I have. You know, and if those keywords eventually ju just wind up being losers, then kill them. That's kind of my uh, my strategy, but. Please ask questions in the comments. I am more than happy to answer it. Um, I do think this is a uh, this is an exciting ad opportunity for people who do have an ad budget, and uh, you know, we'll see we'll see where it is. This is probably uh, probably a big one right now. Um, three months from now, I'm sure the game will change as it always does. But uh, you know, we do what we do as uh, as authors in this world to uh, you know to get our, our wares in front of people's faces. Mind mind you, all the advertising in the world. It does not help if you have written a suck book with suck editing. So always keep always keep in mind the basics. All right, I've yammered on enough. Go on there, play around with them a bit, and see what you think. Um, my name is Rick Qualtieri. This is Tales of the Middleist Author, and I hope to talk to you again soon.